Welcome along guys. So this is a new feature I'm calling Tech Tuesday. I don't know if this video is going to go out on the Tuesday. It may not even be, it's not even Tuesday I'm recording it, but it's just a cool name for a tech feature. So this is Tech Tuesday and today we're going to be talking about lots of different stuff, all techy. But today we're going to be looking at my Insta 361X. I'm getting a lot of people asking me how I'm getting the 360 footage, you know, how, how I'm mounting the camera, what I think to the camera. So today we're going to take an in-depth look at a piece of my tech, and that is the Insta 361X. Woo! Roll the intro. I said roll the intro. So 360 cameras, I know it's quite a lot of controversy. Not everyone likes them. Some people say it makes me feel ill, <laughs> but I just love the diversity of shots you get. You can take one of these with you and you can record front and back footage in, in one hit with one of these. You can get all sorts of weird and wonderful angles. Um, I'll throw up, throughout this review, I will throw up some examples of the footage I've gathered over the last six months. So you can see the sort of things we're talking about, the sort of views you can get from this. And I mean, it's so versatile. I took this to Greece with me. I had it out of my backpack. I toured all around Greece with this and it gives a fantastic overview of the surrounding scenery. It's just incredible. I take this on nearly all of my review videos, attaching it to the sides of the bike, out the front of the bike. I've taken it off road before in the mud, in the rain. I mean, the, the camera can give some incredible footage and incredible results. And that's what I really like about it. A little bit about the camera. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. So this is a 5.7K camera. Um, it, record, it has a rear and front facing lenses. So basically this is recording front to back all of the time, which is why the video footage is so large, because of course you've got two cameras running in one, almost, if you like. So this, is, this produces directly from the video it's recording, like a continuous shot of everything around the camera. You've probably seen those videos on YouTube where you, those 360 videos where you select where you want to look during the clip. So you can look up, look down, look behind, but you don't really know what you're meant to be looking at. So those videos for me, they don't really work very well. What is so good about the One X is it comes with a, an app for your phone to edit the videos. It also comes with a bit of PC software. So you load that 360 footage into the PC. This is how I do it. I load it into my PC. I can then select where I want the camera to look in that full 360 degree vision and then add keyframes. So as the video runs, I select, I want to look this way. I want to look back way. I want to pan back slowly. I want to look behind me. I want to look forward. If something happens, like a bit of action, a car overtakes or something, you can track that car as it passes you. So you record everything at all times. And then in post-production, you go through re-render and select exactly the action you want your viewer to see, which I think is very, 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 very good. Another very, very cool feature of this camera is, as I say, you can see it there. It has a camera at the front, a camera at the back, but there's, there's this line down the middle. When you look at that end footage, that line is actually invisible. This thing does a, a slight stitching effect. So the, each of these cameras gives you, I think it's 190 degrees of vision. So the back one's 190 degrees of vision. The front runs 190 degrees of vision. So what it does, this 10% with the screen in the way, because these are slightly more than 180 degrees, it stitches that footage together. So you just get a continuous 360 degrees worth of vision, but without this stitch line. Because these are both slightly over 180 degrees, the camera in the software takes out this little bit. It, it, it's in the way. So it looks as if you, you can't see the camera itself and also below the camera it gives an impression because it cuts this out down here as well if you look down it gives the impression that the camera is just floating in the air and following you sort of like a drone effect so it's very very clever and that is another thing which looks great so if i mount this on my handlebars like i have done in a few videos i'll put a clip on the screen it looks like the camera is floating because you can't see the stick where it's attached to the bike because it's doing that clever stitching effect which looks very, very cool. This is why I love to use it, because of that stitching effect where you can't see how it's mounted and because it gives you that ability to just look all around the bike. So if I want the front and rear facing cameras, normally I'd rig up two cameras on the bike, a front and a rear. With this, I can 
have front or rear, and I can render those streams looking front, looking back as two separate video files if I want. So I only have to run one, run one camera, and it gives the effect that I've got a front and rear facing camera. Quite cool. Another great feature of this camera, which makes it brilliant for using on your bikes, is it's got video stabilisation. The Hero 7's got video stabilisation, the Hero 8 has got video stabilisation now, I think even the 6 had some sort of stabilisation. The stabilisation on this is actually done uh, not on the camera itself, but in the software, but it's incredibly good. So you can click to have stabilisation on or off on the exported video clip, but it can rattle around and it will hold a very, very stable footage. It really is quite impressive. The battery life, it lasts about an hour of recording. Now I've had other people say theirs doesn't last an hour, but I've had an hour out of that at most times. I've got two batteries, I've bought a separate battery, I get an hour out of each of them. So an hour's recording is sort of slightly better than what you could probably get with a GoPro, but it's, it's sort of industry standard really. So you've bought the camera, what else do you need to mount it to your motorcycle? Well, Insta360 sell a motorcycle mounting kit, which comes with, uh, I think it's like an arm, a metal arm, various GoPro type mounts. And basically this, this mounts with a normal camera uh, threaded adapter. So it comes with some adapters to turn those into GoPro mounts. So basically any, any of your GoPro accessories you can use to mount this to your bike. It also comes with this little lens protecting case. This is just, it's a bit of a cheap little thing, but it slides in there. It keeps the camera safe. The camera itself is not waterproof, so if you, you can't use this in the rain. If you want to take this out in the rain, I've taken this off-roading in the mud, well I've used this, which is the protective case, which you can purchase this as a separate accessory. This is about £50 for this little protective case, but I've had very good results with it. When it's in the, when it's in the case, the stitching effect, because it's slightly thicker the case, the stitching effect isn't quite as good as when you're just using the camera on its own, but it's still good enough. And I'll flash up a little bit of a footage from when I've been using in the in the in the case here. So you, that's completely waterproof, up to five meters. I've been out in the mud. I've got this thing filthy, no problems whatsoever. I have actually had this touch down when I've had it on the side of the H2 in the past and I've got a tiniest of little grazes on the top of the camera here where it touched the ground as I was going around the bend. So it doesn't come with the case but it's pretty robust. I mean that's touched down on the tarmac at about 50 miles an hour and it survived to tell the tale. <laughs> a little bit of a graze but no internal damage works absolutely perfect. So I've been using the One X for the last six months, six months of hard use, at least used twice a week out on the bike. So I've got a hell of a lot of footage. I've got a lot of videos with examples of what you can do with this camera. So I will flash some of those on the screen. But what have I learned about that camera over that time? Well, I'm going to give you some good and bad feedback about the camera now. There's my list. So good things, the stabilisation is incredible. It's at least as good as the Hero 7, the actual video stabilisation, which is great. It's also very reliable. I, When I first got it, I had a few issues where it would stop recording, and that's because I didn't have a sufficiently fast memory card in it. Once I put the decent sand disk card in, you press record and you can forget about it and it will carry on recording. It will record a continuous file of 30 minutes long. So you'll get 30 minutes and then it will create a new file. So it will create a massive file up to 30 minutes, which is quite nice. You haven't got to have lots of little files to piece together. Um, but it's pretty reliable. I've never had it pack up on me. I've never had it stop recording, apart from those initial problems I had with a lower spec memory card. The best thing about it is just the diversity of the footage you can get and, and the views you can get, which just weren't possible without a 360 camera. So that is probably my favorite thing about this camera. Now, a few bad points about it. The bad points are few and far between, but there are a couple. The first one being it's a little bit vulnerable when it's not in its protective case. If I were to drop that on concrete, you'd probably smash a lens on it. Because it's also shaped like that, even just laying it on the ground will mean the actual lens is touching the ground, which is why it comes with this little sleeve to keep it in. So it's a little bit vulnerable. It is a little bit vulnerable, but I, I managed to not break it. <laughs> but you do feel like, oh, it's not waterproof. If I drop it, I can't even rest it on the ground without it touching and perhaps scratching the lens. Also, the, what, what you get on the camera when you're recording is very basic. You've got no preview. You've just got the battery life and, and the fact that the time is going and, and what mode you're in. It's very, very simple. There's only two buttons on the camera. That is it. 
which in some ways you could say that is a good thing. It's a simple camera, but it would be nice to have some sort of preview that you've got something in shot. Not that I suppose you really have to with the 360 camera. That's the whole point of it, is capturing everything. But it just seems a little bit too basic. Another bad point, the workflow, because you do have to re-render it to decide where you want to look, it does put an extra effort into your video production, but it's, it's worth that extra effort, but it's something to highlight, you know, you, you can't, these videos are produced in Insta's own video format, so you can't just edit these videos directly, they have to be re-rendered, and I think that's the same with the other cameras they produce, they're not, they're not MP4s or whatever, they're their own video format so you have to always re-render, re easy for you to say chops, or do it, you know, re-render them via the phone. That is about it guys, that is an overview of the Insta360 ONE X. As I say, Insta360 did give me this to play around with, to test with. Um, I didn't buy this but I've been so impressed with this. If this were to break tomorrow I would go out and buy another one. I, I couldn't live without this now, I absolutely love the diversity of the shots it brings to my videos so it's absolutely fantastic i can't recommend this enough if you if you're into your bike videos you know you can get some amazing shots with this the only the biggest downside probably is the audio on it it's not great it's only got a single microphone on the top there and if you've got this mounted to your bike you just get a lot of wind noise the audio is fine when you're stationary but when you're moving you get a lot of wind noise so that would be my only criticism for it as a bike camera. If you've got a secondary camera for your audio, like a mic set up on your helmet, then fine, you don't need the audio. But just on its own, you'll get a bit of wind noise. If you want to get hold of Insta360, I've got a link below, I've got an affiliated link, so if you were to buy via my link, I'll get a slight little kickback. Um, also, you get some free goodies, you get the free selfie stick, and I think there's something else you get on the link as well. So. As I say, I didn't buy the camera. I haven't been paid to make this video, but I think you can tell by the amount of times I use this video, use this camera in my videos, absolutely love it. So if that were to break, I'd be off to purchase another, probably for my own link. <laughs> so I get a little kickback. Oh, there we go, guys. That is it for Tech Tuesday this week. I don't know when this feature will be back. I'll, let me know if there's anything else you want to know about. I'm going to do a helmet mic vlogging setup type video, you know, where I place the microphones. I'm also going to do a comparison between my Pista AGV helmet and my uh, Shuey X Spirit. So which one should you buy? So I'm going to do a little bit in the garage because it is cold, it's wet, it's raining outside. So I'm going to do some more garage based videos. I've got to get on with the Hyper. I've still not started taking that engine out. We've got some wings on the H2 now. Ding, ding. So I've got to do a video on that as well, but I'm just waiting on the indicators, so that has to come. But we've got the wings I said I wasn't going to get. I've got those now. So there's stuff coming in the garage, but anything techie, anything camera-wise, anything my vlog setup you want to know about, let me know in the comments, and I'll see if I can do a video for you. But that is about it. Speak to you later, guys. Take care, ride safe, and have a good one. Mmm, that's delicious.